This film is about Accrington and some of the people who have helped to make it so amazing. Our film starts at the Howarth Art Gallery, once the home of William and Anne Howarth. The brother and sister from Accrington collected beautiful paintings and objects from around the world to display in their home. After their death, they gave the house to the people of Accrington and the house became Accrington's art gallery. One of the collections in the gallery is world famous. It is the Tiffany Glass Collection and was collected by an Accrington man called Joseph Briggs. Joseph Briggs was a 17-year-old apprentice engraver when he left Accrington to seek his fortune in America. He went to work for the world-famous Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company, specialising in glass mosaics and stained glass windows. Joseph worked his way up to become manager of Tiffany Studios when Louis Comfort Tiffany retired. When Tiffany died, he left the company to Joseph. During these years, Tiffany Glass went out of fashion. Joseph saved many pieces of glassware from destruction by sending them back to Accrington, where they're now displayed at the Howarth Art Gallery. Can you find out more about Joseph Briggs' life and work? When you come to Howarth Art Gallery, you can see artists working in their studios, creating other beautiful things for the people of Accrington. A few miles away from your school is Peel Park. The highest point of the park is called the Coppice. From here, you can see the landscape all around Accrington and beyond. 800 years ago, the countryside looked very different. It was covered in a huge forest called the Forest of Blackburnshire. There were many oak trees in the forest. Acorn is the old English word for acorn, and this is probably where part of the name Accrington comes from. How many acorn symbols can you find around the town? On signs, buildings and other places. The king and his men hunted in the forest, but the king decided the trees should be cut down so that people could build villages and farms. Tun is an old English word meaning farm. Can you see where the rest of the word Accrington comes from? Can you discover some of the other old ways of spelling Accrington? In those days, the town was split into two, Old Accrington and New Accrington. By 1801, only about 3,000 people lived in the town. Many people had turned from farming to hand weaving a kind of cotton in their cottages called calico. A weaver called Robert Peel invented a way of printing cotton more quickly. His first pattern was based on a parsley leaf, so he became known as Parsley Peel. Many of the weavers protested against the new ways. Can you find out what they did? The inventions which came from Accrington helped textile mills and factories to spread all over the world. The new cotton weaving mills needed engineers to keep the looms going and chemists to invent dyes for the cloth. People lived and worked alongside each other in the mills and factories and became good pals. In just over 100 years, the population of Accrington multiplied 15 times. As well as textiles and dyes, Accrington produced other goods which became household names all over the world. Do you recognise any of them? Many world famous artists, musicians and writers were born or grew up in Accrington too. Can you find out more about them? In 1911, over 45,000 people were living and working together in Accrington. They even went to war together. In 1915, Accrington was the smallest town in Britain to raise a battalion of a thousand men to fight in World War I. They became known as the Accrington Pals. When Accrington was a small village, people travelled along turnpike roads to sell their cloth and buy goods in other towns. As time went on, turnpike roads were built leading to markets at Manchester, Blackburn and Burnley. One of these was Blackburn Road, where the town hall and the market now stand. The town hall was originally called the Peel Institute and was named after the grandson of Parsley Peel, who we talked about earlier. His grandson, Robert, grew up to become Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Can you discover Robert's biggest achievement in government? As Accrington expanded and grew wealthier, it began to have its own shops. The Blackburn Road became a busy centre for making and selling clothes. Burton's was a well-known shop opposite the town hall which sold men's clothes. Which other shop names do you recognise?
There have been many changes in Blackburn Road that your parents and grandparents may remember. Things have changed since you were born too. Can you find out when the changes in these photographs happened? This film has shown you some of the people and things which have made Accrington so amazing. But there are lots more changes happening in the town. These designs were created in 2016 to show how a new town square for Accrington could look in the future. What kind of things do you think would make Accrington amazing?